Uh, okay, I think we uh, there's a few things I think you wanna you wanted to talk about as well. Um, I don't know if we should move on to this one actually. Yeah, Shimar should be quite interested. Uh, sexual dreams. Sexual sure. dreams. Uh, That's so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's put the context of sexual dreams, uh, shall we say, in its proper situation. Sexual dreams do not necessarily mean sexuality. No. Mm. They might do, but they might not. I'll give you an example. Suppose somebody dreams that they're making love to somebody else in a particular way. You might have to use a metaphor or a pun to describe what they're They might be massively turned on. Okay. Yeah? Okay. A sexual dream doesn't necessarily indicate that you're attracted to somebody. It might mean that you want to get close to somebody and understand what's happening on okay. Yeah. Sometimes I get blokes or women who come in and dream that they're making love to somebody of the same sex and they go, oh no, I didn't know I was gay, they think. But if you think about it, what that may simply mean is they're looking at the qualities of the person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're talking you know, okay. to the person. They're looking for something they admire or attracted to in the person. Yeah. Okay. So sexual dreams are very useful. I mean, if you dream that you are making up somebody at work that you never do, you never know, you, 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 you're not having a sexual relationship. It doesn't necessarily mean you are attracted to them. Okay. If it's somebody who's you don't find at all attractive, um, then. It might mean what is in myself that I don't find attractive. Okay. If you're dreaming of making love to some well-known figure on a film you see, and that's pretty, pretty standard sexually. Yeah. Uh, Whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you have to, you have to be very respectful of the way sexuality is in dreams. Freud believed, you see, that there are two parts of the mind. There's the, uh, there's the ego and the id. The id, according to Freud, was where we kept all our depraved thoughts. Now, Freud's views very much belonged to that repressed society of the time. And Freud believed that there were things that we just couldn't own up to. So, if we dreamt of enormous towers, ears, yeah, if we dreamt of um, losing control by running faster and faster. We were symbolizing our sexuality in ways that the brain and the mind could cope with. But of course we live in a very different age to Freud now. Right, yeah. mm. So not good. every jeweled tower is a penis, I'm afraid. It is probably a jeweled tower yeah. that you have to respect. And Freud also believed that dreams kept us asleep. We know that's completely wrong now. No. We know no, the dreams are doing a process of processing. They're rather like um, something on a computer running below the surface. It's a bit like Windows, yeah, uh, handling the information that we're dealing with. So sexual dreams are very important because we live in a society today where sexuality is openly discussed. We just deny death in modern society and don't talk about that. In Freud's day, it was entirely different. But we have to be very fair to Freud in the sense that what he was doing was getting us to talk about those areas of life that he didn't talk about all the time. Everybody thinks that psychotherapists just talk about sex all the time. Sex is just one mirror by which we can read what's going on in your life. You know? okay. There are many other mirrors as well. So sexual dreams are very important and it's also a very useful way of analysing what you're doing, okay. how you're doing it, to whom, why, what you like, what you don't like. Okay. Yeah. Um, people get really, really upset about some of the things that are about sexually, but it is safe. You know, cheat then, you know, it's just uh, yeah. part and parcel of the dream process. It's part of the dream process. Okay. Um, I think, uh, moving on, is something I want to ask you later on. Yeah. Uh, is there anyone who want to possibly reoccur in dreams or maybe, actually, yeah. 
I what, do you about, yeah? what do you want to do for a um, I remember dreams I was going to... Oh, with. yes, yes, yes. Now, people tell me that they don't remember... Some people don't remember dreams, some remember dreams all the time. It's really simple. It's We know there are people who don't dream as much, who don't seem to remember. The more imaginative you are, though you're not necessarily unimaginative if you don't remember, mm. you're more likely to remember your dreams. Okay. There's a very simple way to remember your dreams. When you've got a day off from work, or if you've got nothing to do, in a particular night, just set your alarm to go off every hour and a half. When you wake up, you will remember a dream. Have a tape, have a little tape thing by the, or a little recorder by the bed. Yeah. Speak your dream into it. However dazed you feel, or whatever. Because, sure as, you know, you probably forget it by the morning. Many times I've had dreams. That's, that's really interesting. And then it's gone in the morning. Yeah. So, practice. Some people suggest that what they do when they go to bed at night, one technique I know that sometimes I use, is to imagine, put a chair opposite yourself and talk to it and say, okay, dreams, I want to remember you tonight. Yeah? Right. Give a suggestion like that. Yeah. Other ways to uh, remember dreams, you don't remember your dreams very well if you've been drinking. <laughs> um, alcohol. Different alcohol affects dreams in different ways. The very worst thing for dreams is gin. Yeah. It disrupts your dreams. Um, which gives me an idea of why, why, why to illustrate. Alcoholics do not um, see um, hallucinations because they're drunk. Okay, they so see hallucinations mm. because the, the consumption of alcohol they've had um, has stopped them sleeping properly. So when they're awake, um, their brain is trying to go to sleep and is actually projecting hallucinations, which should be in a dream state, out there. Okay, we do. Yeah. So, you know, there's a particular red one, I can never remember what it is, as soon as I drink, I have the most rich, vivid dreams. Um, and if I've been playing too much World of Warcraft on the computer, sometimes I dream I'm in Stormwind or <laughs> Doratar <laughs> or anywhere like that. <laughs> and the most disturbing thing is you yeah. have people with exclamation marks above their head. <laughs> <laughs> because anything you do a lot of yeah. Yeah, will influence your dreams. If I'm stressed, I would dream I've lost a client. I can't know where I'm seeing them at what time. Or the other night I'd had a, no, a few, week, few weeks ago, I kept dreaming that client after client upon client kept turning up to see me and I had nowhere to put them and they were getting more and more upset that yeah, no, I, I couldn't see them. It's also an indication of what happens. My grandfather, who was in World War I during, um, in the, the beginning of the last century, uh, used to say that people who had shell shock uh, were people who kept dreaming of when they were in the, when they were, they were in the trenches. Mm -hmm. When they went to sleep, they were in the trenches. As long as they were dreaming of the green fields yeah. of Wales, um, they were coping with it. Our dreams are a means to keep us sane. Okay, so they could uh, grasp right. on some level of reality. That's right. So, Really, um, that's an important side of it. It tells a lot about what's going on in our lives. Okay. Yeah. Right then. Um, I think that uh, was quite, quite answered quite uh, good. I know it's uh, definitely for that one. Um, so what we did to that one, so I just think... Do we do... Reoccurring? Yeah, do you want to pick on reoccurring next? Yeah. Um, yeah. Recurring dreams occur in three circumstances. The first circumstance is when they occur when we're trying to get a message to ourselves okay. that we're not acting on. Um, a recurring dream may betray our unconscious to point us in a particular situation, a particular way. A recurring dream might also be an indication of stress because we don't know how to resolve it in a particular, um, a particular situation trying to make a decision. Okay. We have that old expression, sleep on it. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Sometimes we get answers um, after we've slept on it. And then there's a curious dreams where the message is so vague. I remember a friend of mine having a dream that he was at Paddington Railway Station trying to get a train to Paddington. 
Okay. A few simple parts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It showed that he'd already arrived. But okay. he didn't yet recognise that he was aware of it. Um, dreams like that are a message. But I'll give you an example. Just before Princess Diana was killed in the car accident in Paris, a few, good few years ago, it seems to now, that night, the next day, I had, I had lots of, on Monday morning, I had people ringing up and dreamt, saying they dreamt Diana had died. Now, probably lots of us dream about figures yeah. dying at night. And that, when it actually happens, you remember it. Yeah. 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 But dreams can also have very important ways of leading us forward. I remember um, a friend of mine who does a lot of, lot of international lecturing um, during the war was evacuated from Jersey to London because the Germans were coming. And she used to dream, that she used to talk about, she used to feel, hear the bombs falling. And she imagined herself in a valley in a mountainside, in a monastery, um, where she was safe. Years later, after the war, she actually came across a picture of that monastery. Now well, that's really quite a bizarre thing. Yeah. yeah. Hey. Um, just before my father died, six months before, uh, he dreamt that he, he nearly died that time. And he dreamt he was walking through a wood in what, what was clearly ancient Greece. And he came to this building, which was a Greek, uh, a Greek temple. And in it were the old gods and goddesses of the ancient Greeks. And they said, you're not wanted yet, Keith. Go back. You woke up, tell me about it. And uh, he thought it was a really interesting experience. He said, for God's sake, don't tell your mother. It'll do her head in. Um, but to him, that symbol was very, very important. There we have a rational man working as a building estimator, very much mathematically inclined, has a dream which comes from the old gods and goddesses of ancient Greece. Uh, a bit you don't talk about to many people. No, no, no. Not, <laughs> you know? Not in this day and age. Not in this day and age. And so a lot of it is embarrassment about not talking about your dreams and looking at issues that could help us. Mm. So, you know, um, the most interesting thing about the dreams of the dying um, usually are that it seems that this frequently, I think there was a case that Mary Louise von Franz was writing about in her book, Death and Dying in Dreams. And there was a young woman who was dying of terminal cancer. Um, she hadn't got long to go. And in this dream, she looked round and she saw herself in the bed. And the doctor said to her, it's all right, you can go now. He cured. The next day he died. Which is very, very interesting. Uh, it's almost as if the dream gives a suggestion that we do continue in some form. Life carries on. Continue. Life carries yeah. on. The mind is incapable of, if you like, the unconscious, of, of perceiving of the ending of it. Mm. And if you look at the, the dreams of the ill and the dying, you get some very interesting images. Um, you know, like the man who dreamt he was going up a mountain and everything was just grey and dying. And he just broke through and up there he was on top of the mountain and it was beautiful. It's amazing things like that. Sad. So you need to respect dreams yeah. in that way. Always relate it back to the person. What does it mean to them? Yeah. Bridges, Tread like softly because you walk upon my dreams. Yeah. Yes? Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, if you start telling people's dreams are uh, meaningless, caused by pieces of cheese, uh, you're not going to get much out of them. No. Definitely not. So, you know, look at them. What does it mean to the person concerned? Okay. I think that's, uh, that's quite interesting. That's actually, that's, again, anybody watching live, uh, Go to South Coast, Coast Watch UK, uh, follow the links, or go to Facebook and uh, find us in the South Coast, in the South Coast, Coast Watch. And look for us and ask uh, questions like now. We're still on here for another 32 minutes, I think. So, yeah, ask away while we move on.